Well, Steve, such a resounding theme in this movie is you're not alone, no matter how isolated you feel. And this is such a universal human desire. We all want to be fully known and fully loved. So talk about the timelessness of this message and also why it's so relevant right now. Well, I, I, I think, as you said, it is a timeless message. It's something that, that you, know, you would think over all the years and after all the experiences that we wouldn't need to keep saying it, and yet we do. Um, and and it, it could not, and it's my opinion, considering what we've all been through the last year and a half with all the isolation and all, all the suffering that people have gone through, whether you've lost somebody or not, or somebody got sick or not, or, or, you know, your business closed or not, whatever it is you're gone through as a society, as a world. Um, the idea that, that we are not alone and that that isolation was shared by all of us. Um, it feels, I'm actually quite proud. It, we, uh, we've already gotten many, um, much feedback that it has been very helpful to young people and their families. So, so that's very gratifying. Can you share some of those stories? Well, it's, it, it's, I remember a lady, I, I, I might even get emotional. This was, uh, I was in New York City on Sunday and we had a, we had a, um, uh, a screening and a lady came up to me in the lobby. I never met her. Um, and she said, you know, that she had lost her son to cancer two years ago. And that she, like, it was really amazing when she said, this movie really helped me. Yeah. Yeah, that really got me, I have to say. And there have been others like that, but that one really sticks out. What does it mean to be a part of this, honestly, this, this groundbreaking movie that is changing so many lives in such an incredible way and speaking to people at a time when we really just need some hope? It, it, it's, it, it feels like, uh, it feels very humbling and it feels like an honor. It's, it's, you know, look, we all, you know, I heard a quote once, I'm probably gonna, I'm, I'm probably gonna get it wrong, but that the, the most sacred thing that we can give other than our love is our labor. And that whatever we do with our lives, whatever we do with our work, um, uh, you know, to take it very seriously because it could have an impact. So for me, to be part of it, uh, this wonderful show as an artist, of course, it's gratifying and it's, it's very, it's a big honor. And, and I, I feel very, you know, very moved that I was able to do it. But as a human being, I think far more importantly is just to know that a piece of art, like you could walk into a movie and two hours and eight minutes later or whatever it is, 210, you could walk out and, and have and feel like like more hope or more possibility or that maybe some of the, the dark times are in the rear view mirror instead of like right ahead. That's incredibly gratifying and it's why I do what I do. That's amazing. Now, Evan is aching um, just for understanding and for, you know, somebody to be kind to him. And the movie focuses so much on the role that social media kind of plays in his life and the lives of his peers. So why was it important to highlight the complicated role that social media does play in our world, especially among young people? Well, I feel that that, you know, it was such an integral part of the show on Broadway um, and all the productions. Um, and, you know, I, I have two children. My daughter is nine. My, my son is six. You know, you would think, you know, it's amazing that, that their love of TikTok is, is probably more profound than their love of ice cream. <laughs> so, you know, and, uh, and so I see even in them, and I think about this very new world where people's opinions could even become weaponized, that, that it's a really hard, it's a harder world. And so I wanted to do whatever I could to, to show, you know, from, you know, look, I did not write it. That was Stephen Levinson, Pascal and Paul. They're brilliant young authors, but for whatever part I played in it to just show that, that this, this type of fame is fleeting, mm -hmm. um, that, that to not measure, you know, your, your worth by likes to concentrate on real world friendships rather than friend requests whatever we can do just to remind people that there is a real world um, and that, and that uh, flesh and blood relationships and, and, and that society should not keep dwindling so we can live online all the time. Because in many, many ways, as, as much as it's brought people together, which is wonderful, it's torn people apart in so many ways. Um, and so we just, we just wanted to make a comment about that you know, hopefully in an entertaining and not a preachy way, but still it's a very important subject 
And I'm glad that you asked the question about it. Yeah, thank you. No, I have two little ones. My kids are one and three and you have kids. Oh yeah. How did being a father inform the way you approached this film and especially treated, treated the parents in this movie? Well, I, I, I always, with all of my work going all, going all the way back to the person being a wallflower, I always, I, it always bothered me so often that Hollywood movies treated the parents like they were idiots or that they were somehow uncaring or unfeeling. Um, you know, in so many teen movies, uh, they, they're just treated this, like this appendage. And I thought back to my own high school years. I said, you know, my mom, and, my mom and dad were not idiots and they were not clueless and they loved me. Um, and so I always had that as a fundamental kind of cornerstone of my character and my world philosophy. But I will say as a parent, it's, 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 it's the worry, isn't it? It's like we have a primal need to know and to believe that our children will be okay and we will do anything to ensure their safety and, and, and support their growth. So that primal need, I don't know without children if I would have understood um, Cynthia, uh, so well played by Amy Adams, um, her grief, or, or uh, Danny Pino who plays Larry, his, um, or certainly, oh my gosh, certainly uh, Julianne Moore, um, who plays Heidi Hansen and her worry about, you know, will my son be okay? What's going on with him? I deeply related to these parents and, you know, uh, I had many discussions with the three actors um, to help them, uh, you know, re bring them to life. That's awesome. Now, Steve, you grew up in a, a Catholic household. Is that correct? That is so correct. Does your faith or your religious background, does that inform some of these projects that you, that you take on? Because you, you, you're behind so many amazing projects that have these biblical themes of compassion and mercy and forgiveness. Uh, in many ways, yes. It, it, it's being from Pittsburgh, where I'm from, and being raised Catholic, but also it's 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 a community how do i how do i articulate it basically um the fundamental gospel of you know to love thy neighbor as thyself and and the fundamental uh need of kindness and compassion as you said and and my big word and and it's getting bigger as i get older is respect a, a fundamental civil and and respect like my biggest hero uh, growing up in Pittsburgh as an artist was, believe it or not, Mr. Rogers. Um, you know, I, you know I, I could say George Romero, who made Night of the Living Dead. And trust me, I love <laughs> Night of the Living Dead and I love George Romero. But growing up, it was Mr. Rogers. And, and he, he, he filmed his, uh, you know, he filmed his show like 20 minutes from my house. Um, and I thought about the fundamentals of his teaching and his art to like look at every person, regardless of their age, of their gender, um, uh, their color, whatever it is, like male, female, you know, it, it, none of it mattered that in terms of that everyone deserves to be looked in the eye and respected for where they are and who they are and where they live. And that, that I was taught in the church, that I was taught by my parents and my grandparents um, and my grandfather, whom I'm, I, I'm named for. Um, and uh, and that's, it's, it's in everything about my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, I don't know, to me, these movies that I make, whether it's Perks Being Wallflower, Wonder, or now Dear Evan Hansen, are, are very natural. And, and I'm really glad that I'm able to, to make something with, you know, in the Hollywood system that, that has, I think, you know, wonderful values. I, I hope so, anyway. Yeah, absolutely it does. So, see, what were some challenges you faced bringing Broadway to the big screen because you do it so effortlessly? Well, I'm glad that you think it was effortless because it was not. <laughs> but I'm glad it looks that way. That, that's, that, that means that we did our job pretty well. So thank you. Um, you know, when I saw the show, I love the show. And, and I thought about, so often on Broadway shows, it's like they use the movies to make them bigger or make them more colorful. Or, you know, we all have seen movie musicals and some of them are wonderful, but like where they're talking and suddenly the, the lights change and everything becomes big and, and colorful. And, and then the song doesn't feel like the scene anymore. And so when I came on board, what I said, and everybody was, was down for this, I think that's why they hired me actually to do it, was I said, it would be great to have live singing, to have like actually put them on camera. And so when you see Ben Platt or Caitlin Deaver or Amy Adams or Julianne Moore sing, it's really them doing it in front of the camera to make it feel for the audience like I felt 
you know, at the Music Box Theater when I saw it, that we're all in this together. Um, I wanted the audience to feel like they were on set with us, you know, making this uh, during uh, when we made it, the movie during the, the pandemic. And um, yeah, so that was the cornerstone of, of the aesthetic of it. And uh, I thought it, it came out really well. And, and I'm glad it made it, it, it seemed effortless. That makes me oh, really happy. It did. It's so well done. So Steve, ultimately what you want your viewers, especially your younger viewers to take away from Dear Evan Hansen. I, I want them to take away with a sense of, I want them to feel seen and understood, and I want them to have hope with that. We have all been through a terrible time and we're still in it, you know, and the devastation on young people, I've seen it firsthand, it's been, it's been unbelievable. And so all that isolation, it, uh, the extra depression and anxiety and some of the, the suicides, it's tragic what has happened. And so what I hope is they see the movie and they really see um, hope for their lives and they see themselves and that their pain and the grief that they've experienced. And in let's never forget the, the parents and the families who love them and are trying their best to support them, that they feel seen and understood and, and, and have that sense of hope that that's why I make these movies. That's why I made perks. That's why I made wonder. And, uh, you know, that's what I hope uh, everybody gets from it. 